The 60s is a crazy time. I was born on March 25th, uh, 1960. I'm black and beautiful. The 60s had to be age of innocence lost. Good morning, Vietnam. Get out, Grace. Five seconds. President Richard M. Nixon. So help me God. President John F. Kennedy was elected into office January 20th of 1961. He is remembered as one of the most iconic presidents and was a pioneer of the media age, being one of the first presidents to speak on television which changed the presidential elections forever. And so my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Kennedy inherited the battle on communism, which was already underway, with events like the Cuban Missile Crisis and the Bay of Pigs, which sprouted from the war on communism. After these events, the nuclear scare became far less of a threat because of the Soviets, Cuba, and America's agreement to remove missiles and prevented future threats. Kennedy also inherited a war primarily aimed at preventing communism in Vietnam. Kennedy was so devoted to the country that he said that he would pay any price to assure the survival and success of liberty. This war was being fought in the name of containing and preventing the spread of communism for the benefit of future countries. The Vietnam War brought about a lot of social movements, like the college movements that allowed politics to be discussed much more freely than in previous decades. After the assassination of President Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson was sworn in and later went on to win another presidency. And this administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. Due to his profound involvement in the Vietnam War, a group rose up and in protest of his actions, made the unity of the United States one in support of brotherly love, flower power, and peace for all. LBJ was known for designing the Great Society legislation, the War on Poverty, forming protection for the environment, supporting civil rights, public broadcasting, Medi-Cal and Medicaid, as well as a great aid to education. These are some of the basis for furthering our society and are still seen today. Also, Another great presidential accomplishment came when the United States defeated the Soviets in the space race by being the first country to land a man on the moon. And as best said by Lance Armstrong, it was one giant leap for mankind. By defeating the Soviets, the United States inserted their position as the, as the hegemon of the world and continued their war on communism. The 1960s economy contained a period which strengthened the U.S. in both the gross national product and the rate of employment. Records show that in 1965 alone, the GNP increased $9 billion and unemployment stood at an astounding 1.4%. This enabled many Americans to enjoy greater wealth and luxury as the average American's real income had increased to over a remarkable 50%. In means of civil rights, oppressive grip Jim Crow laws were removed, allowing African Americans to gain more freedoms, segueing to a substantial identity movement that increased individuality and put down the conformity of the 50s. Civil rights leaders such as MLK and Malcolm X might have had different views on how they approached civil rights. However, their goal in the long run for equality was the same and brought brotherhood to unify blacks across the country. With the success of civil rights, Americans grew away from the orthodox conserva conservatism of the 50s and began to become more tolerant of each other and open to new diversity and accept of acceptance of individualism. Groups such as CORE and the SNCC propelled these new ideas by way of protests and marches. Technology such as the radio and the television exploded in the 60s, paving a new way for connections and enjoyment. The TV allowed for atrocities such as the Attica prison riots and the Birmingham bombings to be revealed to the public, which informed the people of the unfairness and motivated them to take actions and vote. Both became an important part to the communication and entertainment for the American public. I feel like we're really embracing a hippie counterculture movement 
as the American youth is rejecting the traditional values of their parents and we're forming a culture of our own. And we're really advocating free love and flower power and we're not afraid to experiment with our drugs. And through my music, I feel like I'm really exploiting the political and social views that are happening and showing that people shouldn't be afraid to express who they are. In the 1960s, the hippie counterculture movement emerged. This outburst of a hippie movement was a reaction to the Vietnam War, as they proclaimed, make love, not war. They chose to drop out of society rather than engage in conformity. Hippies developed a profound sense of style as men grew their hair long, challenging traditional gender stereotypes. As a rejection of consumerism, Hippies often wore secondhand clothing or made their own showing that they were embracing a counterculture that would change the way people would think. Hippies challenged people's beliefs through music, like Woodstock, where over 400,000 people gathered for a three-day festival of folk music, acid, and psychedelic rock. Bob Dylan, The Grateful Dead, Joan Bees, and The Beatles were popular musicians. Even though hippies were mainly referred to as dropouts or burnouts, they used literature to reflect what was happening in political and social issues. Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird created new ideals on feminism as well as Catch-22 which preached disillusionment. To many hippies, money did not bring happiness because the stormy 60s reflected a voice for change through music, literature, and fashion.